Hi, I'm Gayla Scrivener, ex-corporate girl and now work-from-anywhere adventure seeker. Creating a work-from-anywhere lifestyle isn't without its challenges, but those challenges certainly don't overshadow all the many benefits. What breaks my heart is seeing folks stuck and unhappy in a career and lifestyle when they want more out of life. I believe that we all have the opportunity to create the life of our dreams and earn a living in fun and creative ways to make our dream lifestyle a reality. You too can experience wonderful adventure and freedom as you live life on your own terms. In this weekly podcast, I share experiences when it comes to growing a lifestyle business through guest interviews, content marketing experience and perspectives, virtual leadership lessons, and I'll even throw in some travel adventures. My hope is through all the interviews, the tips, advice, and personal experience, you'll be inspired and motivated to keep going and creating your dream lifestyle. Life's an adventure. There's no time but the present to live life to the fullest. Daniela Lissio is a writer, business consultant, corporate lawyer, and creator of the How Not to Get Screwed by Your Lawyer, the workshop designed to help business people better manage the relationship with their lawyer to save themselves money and stress. Daniela spent 12 years as a corporate lawyer, both in her hometown of Toronto, Canada, and in New York City, working on mergers and acquisitions, financings, private equity investments, and corporate reorganizations. In 2013, she left New York City for the Ozark Mountains to be with her guy, Dan, whom she met coming down the summit of Mount Kilimanjaro in Africa. Who would have thought coming from New York City to the Ozarks? She started her consulting business to help small businesses better strategize for long-term success through online courses, fun copywriting, and more effective sales strategy. In addition to her consulting work, Daniela is in the process of writing her first book called How Not to Get Screwed by Your Lawyer. Daniela and I first met each other through an online course that we both were participating in. Then we were able to get to know each other a bit better as we happened to join the same online mastermind. While we met online through a course and mastermind hosted from someone way out east, I was utterly floored to find out that she was living in a tiny town just about an hour away from where I'm currently calling home. I've been to that tiny town many times, passing through to one of my and Robert's favorite off-roading spots. Wow, what a small world. Daniela is not only an ex-lawyer who teaches non-lawyers how not to get screwed by their lawyer, She's also an adventurer, and I love following her and learning from her. I'm honored that she's here on the show today, and I'm honored that I get to introduce her to you. Now let's get right to the interview. Daniela, I am so glad that you're here today. Thanks for joining me. Thank you so much for having me, Gayla. Before we get started, I would love for you to tell my audience a little bit about yourself. Well, it's always hard to answer that question because you think, oh, a lot or very little to say. Well, I started my career as a lawyer in Toronto, where I'm originally from, and moved to our firm's New York City office. And I was there for eight years before going to climb Mount Kilimanjaro in Tanzania, Africa for the first time. And on the way down, I met my partner, Dan, who lives in the Ozark Mountains. And I eventually decided to move here to start my my career in business consulting and associated businesses. So you're from the big city and you transplanted yourself on purpose to the Ozark Mountains, which <laughs> I'm from the Ozark Mountains. So I know exactly where you are. And when we first met, I said, really, that's where you live. And we met online of all places and exactly. networked to know that we're neighbors, but you transplanted yourself on purpose going from big city to little tiny town. How does that make <laughs> you feel? Yeah, it is a big transition. I actually do live in a tiny town. I live in a town of a few hundred people about an hour from Springfield. I think change is fantastic. I think change is so good to just sort of give you a different perspective. I love the big city. New York City to me is not too big a city. Um, it was, I loved my time there. It's a wonderful city. Um, I love my hometown of Toronto, but I, I, I love 
being on 23 acres in the beautiful Ozark Mountains and to start a business in an area that is really just so inspiring for those of us who love nature and love getting outside. And that's a huge part of my life. It is, um, it's really been a blessing. So to me, changes, changes, I think what you make of it. (laughs) Absolutely. In New York and in Toronto, you practice law, right? I did. I was a corporate lawyer for 12 years. um, And and loved it. It was a wonderful career. Uh, law is, you know, sort of a demanding profession that requires you keep learning. You're working with generally motivated people. I love business. So I, and, and I was a business lawyer. I worked with corporate clients. So for many different reasons, I just, I just loved it. But I also, like I said, did love business and wanted to kind of make that transition. I had always seen myself making that transition expected that that transition would happen five years into practice. And instead it happened 12 years into <laughs> into practice. I know many of us have, you know, sort of these thoughts of, well, maybe I'll, I'll do something else later, but we just don't know what that next thing is. And it finally became clear that either I was going to stay a lawyer for even longer, or it was just, it was just time to just give it a try and, and try something new. I didn't realize that you had that itch to be an entrepreneur and you wanted to make that transition. Transplanting yourself to a community of a few hundred people, you pretty much have to create your own job. There's not any corporations where you live. I know that. (laughs) (laughs) And and the job market there is, is different. So what's exciting and what I love about you is that you created your own, not job, you created your own business and lifestyle that you wanted. That is fantastic. What may have been the biggest challenge in doing that transition? That's a great question. And I think the biggest trend, the biggest, the biggest challenge for uh, me was, and, and I still struggle with it, to be perfectly honest, in some ways, but I'm better at recognizing it, which is this idea that I have to be constantly learning. Now, I believe we all should be constantly learning, and that is a lifelong process and one we're gifted with. But there's a point at which business demands that you not learn and do. (laughs) The point of learning is to take what we learn and then implement it and create something with it, whether it's a product or a service. And it's so easy. It was really easy for me to say, well, I know how to be a lawyer. I mean, after 12 years, I had developed a little bit of a proficiency. And even in law, obviously, no lawyer, no lawyer will ever tell you that there's, you know, that the learning stops. It, it, that's impossible to be proficient in that profession. But you take that, it's like, okay, I've learned, I've got some level of particular proficiency. And now I'm trying to start my own business, which is a very different business than the businesses I had been exposed to, which were big, multi-million, you know, thousands of employees all over the world type of businesses to creating your own enterprise. And so you think, okay, I've got to learn all these different things to be able to do that. When in fact, I think the real secret to business is, you know, it comes down to some really basic things. And I didn't know that early on. So it be, and because you're sort of constantly learning these new things, which I'm sure you've experienced um, at different times, and it's learning how to package it up in a way that allows you to do the things that you're good at, delegate other things, find either employees or independent contractors that you want to work with, develop your own team, whatever that looks like to allow you to bring a product or service to a particular audience that you want to help. And I think for, you know, I've now been um, in that process for seven years and I still get that little, oh, I've got to learn this. And it now I know to rein myself in and say, well, do I really need to learn that? Or can I just find someone to do that part for me? <laughs> And there's still some times where I say, no, I actually want to learn this, which, you know, initially it started off as my um, biggest vice, if you will. But I've realized that's not a bad thing because what I've realized is that process has led me to 
developing what I call in a very crude way. Um, so I apologize to you and your listeners. I call them sort of like FU skills. People talk about having, oh, I should have like my FU money, like to do whatever you want. I, to me, that's, you know, that that's not the best place to be for a business person. The best place to be is to develop a series of skills that really lets you change and adapt to a changing marketplace. And what is better than that? And, you know, for example, you and Robert decided you were going to take your travel or, or go traveling and take your business on the road. And because of the collection of skills that you had developed, you were able to do that. And I think for all of us, the way you create the life you want is, again, to sort of say, which skills do I need to package up and use to create that particular life. And I don't think that looks the same for everyone. Yeah, I don't think so either. Long winded answer, but I hope that. (laughs) No, no, I I love that. And one of the things that, because I jumped out of corporate into entrepreneurship, there's skills that you have to learn. You you have to think differently. Mm -hmm. And one thing that you read in books and you know you you're supposed to have on your team a great accountant a great attorney a great you know all of this on your team to get you set into the right thing but when you're just starting out you're like i can't even afford all of that or you get intimidated or don't feel like you're ready to approach those type of professionals you work in an area and being an attorney that there's kind of a, a stigma, I guess, if you will, or there's a, what folks don't necessarily like working with attorneys or intimidated by working with attorneys. So why, why is that? Why do we have that mindset? How can you help on getting us over that? So that's a that's such a good question, and it really is what led me to create a workshop called "How Not to Get Screwed by Your Lawyer," and uh, it, that's the book that I'm in the process of writing. Actually, unfortunately, when we hire someone with an expertise that we don't have, what op- often happens is exactly what you indicated, which is there's this deference paid to that other person, and that often translates into being very intimidated, even for, this is what I've discovered, even for sophisticated business people who are not necessarily intimidated, excuse me, in other areas of their life, they just, again, because of this relationship, feel that way. And I realized that you know, I had left sort of this big corporate world and in the process of starting my own business and working with a lot of other uh, small and medium sized businesses and service providers that those business people were not being serviced with any kind of assistance to help them see that, no, they don't need to feel that intimidation. They don't need to feel like they need to be deferring to this person with the expertise. Now, obviously, to some extent, you're going to defer to whoever, your doctor, your accountant, your lawyer, because of the expertise that they have. That's what you're hiring them for. But there are a whole bunch of skills that each of us has uh, as business people, as people just generally, that you can use to better that relationship. And that's why I created this program, which is really just to present a very systematic and simple process to ensuring that you did manage that relationship better, ultimately to save you a lot of time and money, and probably most importantly, a lot of frustration. Unfortunately, a lot of people also feel like here they're paying this lawyer and the lawyer should really be their biggest advocate. It's usually not very pleasant to have to go through a any kind of legal issue, even if it's a positive thing, like, you know, say it's a business deal where you're buying and selling a company, even in that case, it's just a, it's just a very frustrating process. It's a long drawn out, confusing process. And there's ways that you can kind of remove some of that complication and frustration. And that's really what the How Not to Get Screwed by Your Lawyer workshop and ultimately book will help people do. I don't, you know, know the exact answer to your question because, 
you know, some people say, well, people feel intimidated because, you know, they need a lawyer and it's, you know, you never want to be in that position of feeling like you need this professional. That's true for doctors as well, for example. We don't, and we don't generally feel the way about doctors, the way we feel about lawyers. It's a very negative uh, impression of, of the type of people lawyers are, which of course is not fair, but that's the public's view. That has been the view for decades and it continues to be so. The most recent surveys will show that people just generally don't have a positive impression of the legal profession and of lawyers specifically. Rather than kind of, you know, I, I don't even know if we need to understand that other than to say I created this as a way, as a support mechanism to help an underserved market, which is that business user of legal services who doesn't really get that support. There's nothing that helps them through what is a very typical situation because it's almost impossible that any business person is not going to have need for a lawyer at some point in their life. Well, I'm anxious for your book to come out and learn more about that. But as you're talking, what popped into my mind is the relationship between what we have with our doctors. And sometimes, Mm -hmm. I mean, because we we go to them for routine maintenance on our bodies, we continue, typically we continue to go to a physician because we get to know them and like them. They get to know us. And there's that part of the bedside manner that we probably like about them. That's why we continue to go to them and it's building a relationship. And I'm sure that as business owners, we should think that way about our attorney is to build a relationship with them. And that is exactly why this product and eventually book <laughs> will exist because that, that, is the, that is how it should be seen is building that relationship up and having that confident, confidant available to you, that advisor who is going to be there where even if he or she can't do the type of work that you need done, they will recommend you to the right sources of um, information or the right lawyer. I think in many ways, this is not ju- this is not at all about bashing lawyers. It is about addressing a need in the legal system where good people who are just trying to get through a very bureaucratic and, like I said, complicated and frustrating legal system can have that support to help them build that relationship with an essential advisor in their business. So no question. Um, I'm glad you raised that because, and, and including the doctor point, because the principles in this book, I think um, I, ultimately my, my hope, my dream is that people will be able to use them in all professional relationships that they have, whether it's with their accountant or their doctor or anyone else their financial advisor, any number of people that um, business people are relying on to give them the services that they need, while no one should be feeling intimidated. And I think, again, if you create a simple and structured process, which is exactly what I've done with this, how not to get screwed by your lawyer process, you take that, you won't feel that intimidation. That's a big deal because then you you can feel confident. The whole court system. I mean, you don't have to wait until your something goes wrong. And in fact, I would dare to say, don't wait until something goes wrong before you have a relationship with an attorney or do some simple things with them first. Sure. Absolutely. Um, You know, a lot of people, a lot of business people will just not do, not use a lawyer at all because they perceive it to be, it's going to be too costly, too time consuming, too frustrating. And then they end up in a pickle when things don't go the way they intended. That's a dangerous place for a business to be. It's one thing to pull an agreement off the internet somewhere and just say, okay, this is good enough. And that's fine. That will work until there's a problem. Um, some, sometimes that's okay. Interestingly, to address that, though, there are a lot of other options that don't require a you know anyone to have to go to a traditional law firm. 
Um, the, the landscape of legal service providers is changing dramatically, and that is a very positive thing for business people in particular. And I go into that in the book. In fact, I have an entire chapter on that subject just to help, again, people understand the landscape better and to not feel like, okay, I have to wait until something goes wrong before I you know, put a good legal agreement in place. That's usually, like I said, a very dangerous place to be, but I understand why so many people do it. It's, you know, again, it's, it just sometimes doesn't make sense given the cost and time involved to, to put something more formal in place. So I'm glad you raised that because again, I think that's part of the whole system. How not to get screwed by your lawyers. Yes. It's addressing the relationship with the advisor, but it's also helping people understand that legal landscape a lot better so they know when to kind of do things on their own and when to get professional help and the different ways that you can now do that as opposed to thinking I have to go to some big law firm and pay someone $500 an hour to get help. Mm, Yeah. And I think that you brought up a a really interesting point of the landscape of the workforce is changing just all over the place, but in particular attorneys and how that particular service or expertise is more accessible to the small to medium business owner. Yep, absolutely. And your point is really good about businesses also changing in general, right? Just, I mean, given look work that you do in, in terms of all of the, you know, your team is all over the place. You have people that create your agency from everywhere. And here they are all being able to again, provide a service in in a virtual setting without, you know, need for uh, brick and mortar or even just a traditional business, the way we, we think about that. And as that has changed so dramatically, so have the needs of um, people in terms of their, you know, the legal help that they need. So it, it's, it's somewhat expected that the legal landscape would also be changing. It's been changing, I would say, for a good 20 years, but in the last few years in particular, you know, there, there have been alternative legal service providers. They started popping on this on the scene really um, around, you know, early at the turn of the century, really um, early 2000s. And now they've really taken hold. Um, there's there's, you know, in the last, I would say, five years in particular, massive changes. And I expect those changes to continue. One of the reasons is that they use technology a lot better than a traditional law firm. And there's lots of different reasons why that's the case. But look at the changes that we have in online services for goodness gracious, like that's such a hard landscape for business owners themselves to to navigate, right? There's new things and you get caught up in, oh, well, maybe this can make my business more efficient. And you, it, it's just it's just hard to manage all that. Well, the same thing is happening in terms of the the provision of legal services. Alternative legal service providers, also sometimes called uh, law companies, they, they just, for different reasons, use those technologies to such a better degree that, again, it just, it just makes them a more viable option. So there's these changes that are happening so quickly in the business world are obviously just happening on the side of legal services as well. Now you've mentioned your workshop, how not to get screwed by your, your mm-hmm. lawyer. Can you tell us a little bit about that? And is it open to anyone or is it certain times of the year? I have had, um, I've run a few of them and they are because they were live. I have, um, they're, they're offered at, um, at different times. Mm-hmm. Uh, at this point, I'm uh, getting the book out. The part part of why I wanted to do them live, and they were so great because uh, the people I had in the workshops were able to provide just really good examples. And I wanted to use that as a way of sort of saying, okay, is this something that people really need and how specifically can I better help them? And the stories that came out of that were really, really fantastic. So I do update my website with with new dates, um, and I will have uh, I will likely uh, likely have another. But there will also be uh, in the not so distant future there will be a a uh, an online version of that as well. What is your app? There's a download in the App Store. There is. I uh, so it's not in the so it's in the App Store through a platform that I use. Speaking of 
innovative technology, this particular software developer realized that, you know, here I am creating these apps that, yes, people can get a, you know, a business can get a, a, an app done kind of on the cheap, you know, sort of in the under $10,000 range and even as low as a few thousand dollars, but they're never really delivering uh, the services in the way that that companies need them to. The, the apps that are designed specifically around a business's needs often cost in the order of, as you know, they could be 50 or $100,000, which is just completely unobtainable for most businesses. It just doesn't really make sense. Mm -hmm. This platform was built on sort of that high-end model, but uh, as an umbrella app for various apps underneath it. So oh, it, cool. Yeah, super cool. The platform is called Learnistic. So I have a link on my website that puts people directly into um, my app. You, so you can download Learnistic from the app store, but you won't have access to the apps unless you go through, you know, any of mm -hmm. them. There's hundreds of apps um, within it. And um, that's where mine is. Now, the reason, you know, why did I put an app together? Well, I just, I, you know, most of us are on our phones and, you know, many of us, are learning. You know, we know the stats for online learning are tremendously higher for like through, uh, through a mobile phone versus sitting at a desktop. And if you're delivering content to people, then, you know, us business people want people to use it and, you know, get some value out of it, actually implement some of the lessons rather than just, you know, hearing something or downloading something and then not listening and not learning. So I wanted to just make it easy for my um, customers and clients to say, okay, here are a few little, little tips that are provided in a, in a way that, you know, you can download the videos and listen to them, even if you're on a walk or uh, you just out in a car somewhere and you want to learn, listen to um, some of the, the lessons that I have in there. And I don't even have, um, I'm just building it out. So I've got quite a number of little short sort of two to five minute reminders, really lessons, um, things that business people can use to help them as they execute sort of this professional relationship with their uh, attorney or other professionals. Nice. Well, I'm definitely going to have links in the show notes to your website. Uh, awesome. I was clicking on on that. It's like, ooh, when you click on the download on your website, there's this cool QR code mm -hmm. because I'm on my, my laptop. So then just take that picture and that will help us download the app. So it's, it, I think that would be super cool to try out. So do you have any stories or uh, an example of someone that you've worked with that was about to get screwed over by their lawyer or they, they were able to divert some pain by working with you? Yeah, that's a great question. Unfortunately, yeah, I, I do. I have a great, I, I've, I've got several. Um, and I, I think another one I will tell you about. It. Uh, but what I was going to say is, unfortunately, I've had so many people reach out to me after they see the title and say, gee, I wish I knew about you before I, because you know, so they tell me the story afterwards. But uh, I'll give you the example of a businessman that was in one of my early workshops, who has spent thousands and that I mean, hundreds of thousands of dollars in legal fees per year. So this is obviously someone who, you know, it's not his um, first rodeo. And he was interested in taking the workshop to kind of, you know, so he does a number of large transactions of a certain type and mm -hmm. that, that's his business. But what he wanted to take the workshop for was because he was, even with his experience, finding that there were constantly the same issues coming up with respect to his attorneys, many of whom he had worked with many times. Mm -hmm. So what we did for the upcoming deal that he would be working on was to say, okay, I am going to create a structure based on what I learned to basically create a different model. What that allowed him to do was basically cut down um, legal fees the next time around by, you know, I mean, it was probably in the order of 10 to 20% just based on, which is a lot of money when you consider the amount that, the amount that, you know, the, the, the amount paid. That 
was helpful, but more importantly, because, you know, obviously it's great to save money, you know, that's, that, that was a lot of, uh, I don't, I don't want to say the amount, but it was, you know, that's thousands and thousands of dollars Mm -hmm. just from sort of better structuring, uh, you know, creating a little system that is useful for, you know, kind of better communications and organizing with your attorney. But the, the part that was most interesting was that it allowed him to open a dialogue with his attorney that potentially created a different kind of relationship down the road, which would ultimately completely change the way he was using his legal services. And the potential for savings was much higher than 10 to 20%, even though 10 to 20%, most people would say, well, that's even that, that alone is great considering it doesn't cost me anything. It's just a little bit of time uh, and really a new way of looking at things that I need to do if that would not want to want to do that. Um, So that was, that was a, that was sort of an early example, which I thought was, was great. And again, it's just a, it's just a, a different way of, of, of looking at the that relationship that lets you feel a lot more comfortable and in control. And that's what a business person really needs. Yeah. Take the mystery out of the whole industry. Yeah. I don't, there's no reason to be intimidated by you, Daniela. You're an attorney. It's, it's just the mystery of it. And we, we block ourselves off. I find it interesting that you had said that he came to you or many of your clients come to you because they are very intrigued with the title. You're getting those folks that have had a bad experience and maybe it's how not to get screwed by your lawyer again. And that, I bet you anything that that's what that again, at the end of the sentence is going through their mind. And that's why they're drawn. But really, for all of us, we shouldn't wait to know how to knock down those barriers of the mysteries of that industry. So I love what you do. This is awesome. I, that's, you know, that's such a good point. I, I hadn't ever thought about the again after. <laughs> the title. Um, and you're right, that that is actually interesting because, yeah, that's how a lot of people come by it is to say, well, I don't want this to happen again. I have had other people say, well, I've not really been screwed by my lawyer. I, I kind of had a pretty good relationship with them. And, and the reason they're curious about it is because they say, well, what could I have done differently? Or what can I do to be proactive and prepare for the next time that I know I'm going to need to hire a lawyer? So yeah, really, really interesting uh, thought. You've given me something to think about. What has been from moving from corporate world, big city corporate world into a small town, but growing your own business, growing your own thing. What has been your biggest reward in that journey so far? Uh, I think it has probably been the knowledge of back to um, sort of the the skills, um, you know, that I refer to as sort of this collection of skills, these FU skills, what I, or, or, you know, turning, turning lemons into lemonade. That's kind of uh, in fact the latest little group social group that I created is called lemonade it just started it purposely to encourage the idea that as business people there are constant lemons we all know that how do we use them to lift ourselves up and create longevity in our business rather than letting them sort of you know take over our lives and <laughs> you know, make us unhappy or, or cost us money or anything else that we don't want to lose. That's probably the biggest gift is just knowing that there are these skills that I have developed to allow me to do that so that no matter what happens in the world, I can take these skills and use them in a way that will not only help me, but help people around me. I love that. I love that you've uh, created a group around lemonade. (laughs) You hear that saying all the time, you know, when you are handed lemons, make lemonade. So I love that concept. Yeah. Because what business owner, I mean, like how many lemons do we have every kind of, you know, often on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. 
something. <laughs> and and how do we create opportunities? I love that. But to be honest, I this is not something that I've been particularly good at. I it it's a it's a constant um, learning effort. And I think we all should remember that that you know some a lot of a lot of us seem to think oh well uh, you know maybe Gala just does this naturally. I, I don't believe that. I think that is that is a process of work that you have put into it, and that is what I've been working on for these years in business. Anyone who's been in business, it's a process of really being able to see the lemon as an opportunity. It's not going to happen all the time or in a way as, that comes as naturally as we would like, but it can, and it definitely can improve. And, and certainly that's what I've worked on. And that's ultimately what this, this group is really intended to do, which is to kind of examine the skills and the habits and um, techniques and strategies to take those lemons and really help you and your business. Awesome. Well, I have really enjoyed our conversation today, Daniela. Thank you for being with us. And one last question. I was hoping that you could share a favorite resource or a book that has really helped you out professionally. Geez, I I don't actually think I can answer that because there have been so many (laughs) that, um, you know, have kind of just all come, come together. And I think the way they've come together is the value. The value is really in the collection of the, of the learnings. So I almost feel like I don't want to answer that because it would be unfair to put too much weight on one thing or the other. I've, I, I mean, I'm constantly... I think I said learning and reading and putting it together, but I think that's where the value comes is, is in just um, exploring different people, different thoughts, different opinions, different views of how to approach aspects of business and life and putting it together in a package that, that resonates with, with me. I love that answer, actually, because do you find that certain books or certain resources kind of gravitate to you in different phases of where you're at in your journey? Oh, my gosh. And then it's just like, I'm struggling with this. And then all of a sudden, it's like I meandered and found this that really helped me at this point in, in, in what I'm doing. But then something may happen. And then I don't know, six months later or six years later, you pick it up again and get rejuvenated, but you learn something from the second or from the first reading to the second and it, it fits. No question. That is so smart. I, oh, that's so good. I'm glad you said that. It, it, it really harkens back to the, the, the principle of, well, a few things like, you, you know, what, whatever you're open to will kind of, will come to you. Number mm-hmm. one. And number two, it's, it, it really is a journey. It's a process. And where are we in that process that will take these nuggets and apply them in different ways? I think I was at this Tony Robbins event a few years ago, and he said something that I really go back to constantly, which is that business is like the biggest personal, something to the effect of business is the biggest personal and professional development you could go through. And I, that is so true to me. Like it's the biggest personal journey that you go through. And I, I mean, how is that not true? That is exactly what your point reflects, which is we are going through this journey and something that we learn or that comes our way at one particular moment is maybe what we need right then, but you return to it later and we're ready for something else to emerge from that same book or learning or anything else. Oh, I love that. I'm so glad you put it that way. Well, thank you so much, Daniela, for being here. How, how can people stay in contact with you? Uh, probably my website is the, is the best way, daniellealessio.com, and there's access to uh, my email list and also the app, and they can uh, reach out anytime through that email as well as um, any of my social media. Well, thanks so much. I'll be sure to have all those links in the show notes, so it's really quick for everybody. So thanks so much again, Daniela. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me, Gila. Well, thanks for joining me today. After Daniela and I were done recording, I was on her website to download her app that she was talking about. 
And when I took a picture of that QR code that you're directed to from her p- homepage, I was prompted to download Learnistic. Now, Learnistic is the platform that she was talking about in our conversation. You just have to create an account and then you're in. But I'm not sure if I did it wrong or not. But once I was signed up, I came to a screen with a variety of recordings and didn't see anything that resembled any of what would have been Daniela's content. So I was confused for a little bit, but I went back to the QR code because I was still on her uh, website on my laptop. So I went back to that QR code screen and took a picture of it again. And I guess since I was already logged in into Learnistic and had a newly created account, the second time I scanned that QR code, voila, her content appeared. The welcome video pops up and ready to play. It's really a pretty cool app and I'm enjoying her content. You should give it a try. It's great stuff. Well, thanks for joining me today. And until next time, have a fantastic week. <music>